All right, we're going to talk a little bit here about concentrations of solutions, focusing primarily on molarity. Uh, that's the AP unit of choice when it comes to solution concentration. I know perhaps in the past you talked about molality when you looked at the ele elevation of a boiling point and depression of a freezing point of a solvent when a solute is added. And to do those calculations you needed molality. There's also percent by weight, percent by volume that I'll just show you here briefly because those are kind of important, especially like in the medical field. But as far as the AP exam is concerned, we're going to stick with molarity. Here you see the sample uh, about uh, percent using percentage by weight, mass of solute divided by volume of solution. So if you have a 10% sodium chloride solution, that means there's 10 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in 100 milliliters of solution. Down in the little descriptive paragraph, though, is something important we'll talk about later. That does not mean you measure 100 milliliters of water and add 10 grams of sodium chloride to it. That, as it says here, will bring about some error because adding the solid will actually change the final volume of the solution. Same with volume volume. So here we have a 5% by volume solution of ethylene glycol in water, okay, which ends up being 50 mils of ethylene glycol. Same thing. You don't put in 50 mils of ethylene glycol, 950 mils of water, and assume it's going to be 1,000 because when liquids mixed together, oftentimes the the molecules for in this instant the ethylene glycol will mix in with the water and the volume will shrink a little bit. So that's just important to note and I'll point that out here again because right now we're going to look at molarity and it says how do you make 500 milliliters of a 0.25 molar solution of copper 2 chloride. So remember that our molarity equation means moles of solute per liters of solution. So in this situation I know my molarity, 0.250, I know my liters of solution, 500 milliliters is 0.5 liters. What I don't know is about my solute. So when I solve for x here, I get 0.125 moles. Not very convenient when it goes to making solutions. If I want to do this, I'm going to have to pull out the copper 2 chloride and I'm going to have to measure something, grams. So what I need is the molar mass of my copper 2 chloride, chlorine 35.5, two of them 71, copper 63.5, so that adds up to 134.5 grams per mole. So when I take my 134.5, grams per mole and multiply that by my 0.125 moles that'll give me the grams of the copper 2 chloride that I need to make this solution which 3 sig figs comes out to be 16.8 grams. Now that's fantastic that's the math but as it says there how do you make this solution? And so typically around here, we will use volumetric flasks to make solutions. And their sole purpose is to hit the mark of a, uh, a certain volume. We've got 50 milliliter, 100, 250, 500, 1 liter, and it only has one mark on it. And that mark tells us exactly the volume of that volumetric flask. So here you see you put some water into the flask then you introduce your solute, in this case our 16.8 grams of copper 2 chloride, swirl it around, get it all dissolved, and then carefully fill up to the line on the volumetric flask, making sure you watch the meniscus, and you should have a nice solution ready to go. In lab coming up here, you're actually going to make a solution of sodium hydroxide that we will then use later to titrate with. So you really want to be careful that you make the solution correct, otherwise you can mess up two different labs. Here's another example of a question we could do using molarity. How many milliliters of 0.163 molar sodium chloride are required to give 0.963 grams of sodium chloride? 
This is a very common question. If you take a certain amount of solution, you can figure out how much solute is in that that you pull because you use concentration. Stoichiometry, I'm sorry, <laughs> dimensional analysis can certainly be used here. If I'm looking to find 0.963 grams of sodium chloride, of course, I want to find milliliters. The link between mass and milliliters is molarity, but I first got to go to moles. So 58.5 grams of sodium chloride is how much one mole is. 23 for the sodium, 35.5 for the chlorine. And so again, I can use my molarity to switch to the volume. 0.163 molar means 0.163 moles per liter. But since the question asked me for milliliters, I know that a thousand milliliters is one liter, so I'm good to go that way. The other thing you can do, I don't know if you remember ever seeing a symbol like this. When you have a three variable equation like molarity or density, you can set up a little uh, cheat sheet thing like this. So if you cover up the molarity, because that's what you're trying to find, it tells you that it's moles divided by liters. If you're looking to find moles, you cover that up and it tells you it's molarity times liters. If you're looking to find the volume, liters, it tells you it's moles divided by molarity. Well, that's what we're trying to find. So you could easily also solve this problem by saying, okay, I need moles divided by molarity. Moles, of course, is mass divided by molar mass. And then I would simply divide that by the molarity. Either way you want to solve this problem, you should come out with the answer of 101 milliliters using three sig figs. All right, the last question we're going to look at here has to do with diluting. This is very common where you need to find what happens to a solution when it goes from one set of conditions to another. And it's usually in some way, shape, or form a dilution, but doesn't always have to be. Perhaps you've seen this or remember this equation, M1V1, M2V2, MIVI, MFVF, I stands for initial, F stands for final, CD, concentrated dilute. Either way, this is just simply a plug and chug equation. So in lab, I'm going to ask you to make some dilutions. So here it says, if you have a solution that is 1.5 molar sulfuric acid, how many milliliters of this solution will you need in order to prepare a more dilute one? 0.18 molar and 100 milliliters of that. First thing I recognize, every time the molarity on the left hand side of the equation is always bigger than the molarity on the right side of the equation. Because we're always talking about a stronger concentration on the left hand side. So I'm just going to plug my numbers in 1.5 is my strong molarity. I'm trying to find the volume of that. My weaker molarity is 0.18, and I'm looking to make 100 milliliters of that. Another word to look for is this word of, because of links the two numbers in the equation, 100 milliliters of 0.18 molar, if that helps. Now that I'm plugged in, I just have to multiply on the one side. So I've got 1.5V equals 18. Divide by 1.5, I get 12 milliliters. So that means I need 12 milliliters of my 1.5 molar sulfuric acid. The rest would be water. In theory, approximately 88 milliliters. But again, of course, what you want to do to make this solution correctly, I would take 18, I'm sorry, I would take 12 mils of that acid, put it into a 100 milliliter volumetric flask, and I'd carefully fill up to the mark with water, and that's how I would make that dilution. 
All right, hope this helps, and looking forward to a good lab with these concepts. Until later.